This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from Alberta's first and only climate positive certified renewable electricity provider. We only source from wind, hydro and solar and we are the leading supplier of electricity to electric vehicles in Alberta. Search today at ecotricity.co.nz. Welcome back to another roundup of news from the world of clean cars and green energy. Thanks for joining me. For as long as battery electric vehicles have been made, their most expensive component has been their battery pack. One reason why EVs have traditionally cost more than ICE vehicles. Mercifully, thanks to improvements in manufacturing and economies of scale, EVs in some markets now reach or beat price parity with ICE vehicles, thanks to the falling price of lithium-ion batteries. And now data from the US government's Argonne National Laboratory shows how much prices have fallen, a massive 90% between 2008 and 2023. Last year, its data shows lithium-ion batteries for EVs cost on average $139 per usable kilowatt hour in a battery pack versus more than $1,400 per usable kilowatt hour in 2008. We can only hope those cost reductions continue to make EVs accessible for everyone. When considering the switch to electric, it's common for potential EV owners to overestimate their range requirements, leading to severe range anxiety and a reluctance to switch. But now BMW is offering customers who drive its gasoline vehicles a way to better identify which of its EV lineup will suit their needs, utilising a new feature in both the BMW smartphone app and the mini smartphone app. If you're a BMW or mini customer who drives a connected internal combustion engine vehicle, you can now track your trips and once you've covered at least 200 trips over at least 2,000 kilometres, 1,250 miles, your app will make helpful suggestions as to which which BMW EV model you should consider switching to. I should note that there are third-party apps that do a similar thing, but kudos to BMW for encouraging people to switch. UK-based charging provider GridServe, which operates both charging stations and full-service electric forecourts across the UK, has announced its intention to expand globally. While the company hasn't announced which markets it will expand into first, what makes GridServe set up different to many traditional charging providers is that its electric forecourt locations offer EV drivers so much more than just a place to charge, combining EV charging for all makes, models and power levels with a safe, clean and welcoming environment to wait while charging. In addition to multiple refreshment options and rest facilities, its electric forecourts also host small grocery stores, an EV education and experience zone, meeting rooms with internet connectivity and a place for children to safely play. And being fully staffed, they also offer full-service charging for EV drivers who need assistance managing heavy charging cables. Having experienced this setup in the UK, I cannot wait for it to expand globally. With a few updates on Tesla's Cybertruck next, with news last week that Tesla has quietly removed its entry-level $60,990 Cybertruck from its online store. A predictable move, given that Tesla has done this for pretty much every other EV it's ever produced, usually due to a claimed lack of interest in an entry-level model, the cheapest Tesla Cybertruck is now going to be the $99,990 twin motor variant, with deliveries now available later this month or September. At the time, Tesla also confirmed that there's no longer a wait list for Cybertruck, which, given just how many hand raises it had after reveal, suggests not everyone who put down a deposit has followed through with a purchase. We also got a price last week for Tesla's promised range-extending battery pack for Cybertruck, $16,000 US dollars installed, with deliveries starting next year. Texas might not be the first place you'd think of as being home to free EV charging, but if you are a Ford EV driver and a customer of TXU Energy, that's exactly what you might now get. In order to encourage customers to charge their vehicles during periods of the day where demand is lowest and energy generation is plentiful, TXU Energy and Ford have partnered to allow the utility to control when customers charge their EVs. This improves grid resiliency, lowering peak demand energy requirements and reduces the need for peaker plants. In exchange, customers who take part in the programme will get credits on their bill equivalent to the energy used by their EV during sanctioned EV charging periods. I should note also that this isn't new. UK EV owners with smart grid connected charging stations have been doing this for years.
With the Paris Olympics now officially over and the Olympic torch on its way to Los Angeles for 2028, complete with Tom Cruise riding a live wire Del Mar, plans for LA's car-free Olympics are now winding up. As part of that, Archer Aviation, in collaboration with multiple local stakeholders, has announced its intent to establish an e-VTOL air taxi service in and around LA by 2026, well ahead of the start of the next Olympics. It wants to tie in key transportation hubs with sporting venues, university campuses and healthcare facilities, as well as locations in Hollywood, Long Beach, Orange County and Van Nuys. While it's great to see an alternative to private cars offered, as Parisians noted with Volocopter, EV toll is a long way from being equitable or accessible for all. We actually need better public transit for all, not just the few. J.D. Power has published its latest electric vehicle experience public charging study, showing a welcome improvement in fast charging reliability and satisfaction in the U.S. Tesla, as in previous years, remains the leader in charging station reliability and satisfaction, but overall, EV driver satisfaction with DC fast charging is on the rise, up 10 points this year on the same period last. However, Tesla's network is still the only DC fast charging brand to rank above the average for the segment, showing other fast charging charging station network providers still have work to do. And as the survey notes, 19% of respondents still reported experiencing a broken charging station at least once during the last quarter. The survey also shows a troubling trend in level 2 charging station reliability, with level 2 charging stations more likely than in previous years to be broken and inoperable. And that's a worrying trend. As CEO of the world's largest electric automaker, you might expect Elon Musk to pay attention to the latest in climate change research. But this week, he was raising eyebrows for his apparent lack of concern over greenhouse gas emissions. During a one-on-one with Republican presidential candidate and former President Donald Trump, someone who is a known climate change sceptic, discussion came around to climate change and emissions, during which Elon Musk offered little pushback to Trump's climate change denialism. At the same time, Time, Musk claimed that carbon dioxide levels aren't yet dangerous and will only be so when they reach 1,000 parts per million, conflating what's seen as the upper limit for safe CO2 exposure inside a building with CO2 in the outside air. Musk also said that we should not vilify the oil and gas industry, despite calling fossil fuel use the dumbest experiment in human history just six years ago. Honestly, we have no words. We've often commented that in order to get more people plugging into EVs, we need better charging provision for those who don't have off-street parking and charging. And in the UK, a company by the name of Kerbo agrees. And it's now announced a new partnership with Enfield Council in London that will allow EV owners to install its patented Kerbo charge system to allow for street-side charging. Already deployed in other towns and cities across the UK, the Kerbo charge system utilises a special channel installed in the pavement that allows EV owners to pass a charging cable from their home to their car on the street without presenting a trip hazard or attracting debris. While customers will have to pay to have a Kerbo charge conduit installed, they will save upwards of £1,100 a year from the lower costs associated with at-home versus public charging. And finally for the segment, we've covered some pretty big EV price cuts on this channel this year, with some EVs getting sizable discounts and incentives to encourage customers to get behind the wheel. But in Aotearoa, New Zealand, Fiat's 500e, imported to the country by Ateco Group, has just been given a 25,000 Kiwi dollar price cut, taking its price from 59,990 Kiwi dollars to 34,990 Kiwi dollars. This not only makes the pint sized EV a great deal, but now the cheapest EV you can buy in the entire country. Gavin Test drove one last year, and his review is on this channel, so go go watch it. And if you are interested, get some seat time at your local dealership. You won't be disappointed. Before we get to the last two stories, a quick question. Are you in the market for a new EV? Because if you are and you live in Aotearoa, you should totally check out our very own buyer's guide at ecotricity.co.nz. It is packed with all the information you need to pick a car that's right for you and includes plenty of details about available vehicles, daily life with an EV and so much more. So follow that link below and start your journey today. Hydrogen fuel cell vehicles were once heralded by many automakers as being the sensible alternative to battery electric vehicles. 
But as time has progressed, <laughs> that's proven false. Not only have hydrogen fuel cell vehicles suffered from a completely unreliable refueling infrastructure that makes EV charging problems look perfect, but their heavy curb weight and lacklustre performance haven't won them many friends. But this week, we got word that hydrogen fuel cell vehicles are being given an unusual and productive task as Ukraine continues to fight off Russia's illegal occupation. Bombs. While it's fair to acknowledge that any vehicle can be made into a weapon with the right tweaks, be it an EV battery bomb or a gasoline explosion, Ukrainian forces realised a full pressurised fuel tank from a Toyota Mirai, when subjected to an external detonation, can produce an explosion equivalent to 360-ish pounds of TNT, which, as Interesting Engineering put it this week, is a very effective, low-cost bunker buster. And finally... Nobody likes noises at bedtime, be it the howling of coyotes out in the countryside or the blaring of car alarms in the city. But this week, residents in part of Los Angeles whose homes look onto a Waymo storage facility hit the headlines for a different type of disturbance. Honking. As it turns out, Waymo's fleet of self-driving Jaguar I-Pace EVs will honk as a way of alerting pedestrians and other road users to their presence if they feel there's a risk of their paths crossing. But for some reason, for the past several weeks, and I don't know whether there was a software bug or something else, Waymo robo-taxis have found themselves sitting in parking lots at night, all honking at one another in some kind of nocturnal show of force. The bumper stickers famously say, honk if you're... I'm not going to finish it, but I think I might have wanted to finish those cars disturbing my sleep. I'll stick to my coyotes out in the country, I think. And on that note, we are done for the day. Before I go, though, do make sure you've hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on the latest in EV news from this channel. And of course, you haven't switched yet. It's time to switch to Outdoor's first and only climate positive certified renewable electricity provider. It is so easy to make the switch. And in doing so, you'll help the nation wean itself off dirty energy and onto clean green power that will keep the land beautiful for generations to come. I'll be back next week as usual, and in the meantime, do check out other videos on this channel, including from the lovely Gavin Kiwi EV Shoebridge, including that review I told you about from last year. So until next time, I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Have an amazing rest of the week. Kakite!